Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Dr. Tony, Tony Chopper, and as promised, this is part one, our unboxing for the iconic mobile suit from Char's counterattack, Char's very own Zazabi in Master Grade form in the Verka lineup. Um, yes, he's incredibly massive, and I can't actually get the entire box in one shot. For those of you who are wondering how big the box is, it's roughly the same size as the old one, or your standard perfect grade box. Without further ado, let's get started. So first off, we're going to go over a little bit of the backstory about the Zazabi. He first debuted in Char's Counterattack in that movie back in 1988. Now, he is piloted by Char Asnable, the arch nemesis, the rival of Amuro Rei. Now, Amuro had the new Gundam where this guy, this beautiful big beast, the Zazabi, was his counterpart, his evil counterpart. Now, in the movie... um. Amuro didn't actually have the technology to fight against the Zazabi on even grounds, so um, Char being the gentleman that he was, he went and gave some of that technology, that Saikamu technology, over to Amuro and Anaheim Electronics so that, you know, they can fight on even grounds because he's all about dueling fairly with his rival and he doesn't want to win just because of technological advances. And, um, yeah, this thing's incredibly massive. He did a whole buttload of damage. And, um, for several things, though, um, in the movie, we did not actually see this long rifle he has in his hand here. So that's kind of an extra. Um, for the ones that people are more used to seeing, his beam shot rifle, or kind of like a shotgun or whatever, um, that's also there as well. All right, now let's go for a quick box tour. All right, in the front, we see a very nice CG um, background right here. Kind of the standard Verka type stuff we got going on with the rest of the line. Nice white background with a CG thing there, kind of like that watermark, and also a very nice CG version uh, right up here of the Zazabi Verka. Looking very, very good. Up top, we see incredibly massive wording, uh, lettering there. Neo Zeon MSN 04, Mobile Suit Zazabi. Verka, of course, so there is some uh, differences in terms of the design because uh, Katoki has gone and um, remodeled a lot of the things, redesigned a whole bunch. Uh, this was made by Anaheim Electronics, and the rest of the specifications are there. I'm not going to read them out because by now you should know, I guess. Down here, some more wording. Uh, right near the MG thing says that it is a version Katoki release, so it is a little bit special. And um, yeah, basically, when I first saw the front of the box, I, it, it was very, very plain. For those of you who do remember the like Gumpla Expo and whatnot, um, all those different shows beforehand didn't actually show the front of the box looking like this. It was a shot of that guy and another one of him like this without any of the gimmicks of the um, posable and movable armor. So it looked a little bit strange and um, I'm kind of glad they went and actually gave him that extra little bit. That little uh, transforming bit or that little armor separating bit to make it look a little bit more filled out and way more awesome. But overall the front looks absolutely beautiful in this nice shiny um, coating or whatever they got here. On the side of the box we have all of the specifications listed here, what you get and whatnot, and of course that big writing again. We also get to see some of the weapons that you're going to get, the long rifle, the beam shot rifle, the shield with the missiles inside, the funnels, the beam tomahawk, the beam saber, and over here we get to see our first or our first real look of what the kit will look like completely painted without the transformation bits and also the back shot of it looking very very nice. And and over here we get to see some of these gimmicks. We get to see the mono eye with the clear thing right there and how everything can actually separate and look very very awesome. The backpack of the funnel part can actually open up as well and it seems like the toe actually has a, quite a bit of articulation. And on this side, more of the same type of writing with a whole bunch of Japanese text I do not know about. Um, down here they are showing a runner, uh, most likely of the stuff that actually gets separated and looking really really cool. Um, here is a pose with him with the long rifle looking very very awesome. Um, with all the armor separated of course, looking incredibly good actually. And yeah, everything looks incredibly detailed and incredibly filled out right now. Um, I can't wait to actually get mine to look like that because he looks like something you're gonna, you know, your eyes are naturally gonna grav gravitate towards. The front and the back of these kits are pretty much the same um, in terms of the box art. 
looking almost identical there, um, with pretty much the same shot we saw on the cover, with of course that Bandai sign over there. This guy was released in December 2013, during the holiday season, and retails for an astonishing 9,000 Japanese yen. Alright guys, let's go and unbox him for you. Like I said before, the box is incredibly big and um, it seems to want to fight me a little bit. Finally got the cover off. And the first thing we are greeted with on the inside is some of those stickers. We are, you're probably you know familiar with those. Water slide decals and a nice, nice runner of red. Really, really, really big parts here. Um, yeah, parts of the shield, the crotch, and uh, other things. Nice bright red. We get some inner frame parts right here with the thrusters. More inner frame parts. I'm assuming this is a part for the uh, heat hawk or something like or the beam tomahawk. We have this um, different type of red, a darker red. And here, some of those uh, things that we've seen so much of. This nice, uh, not quite glossy, but uh, metallic looking sheen to this silver here, where all the mechanical detail is actually going to come out. So it's glad you didn't, have, you didn't actually have to paint that, so that's good. Some more gray for, uh, you know, inner frame parts, some crotch parts, backpack. The tubing right here, um, and also the chest, upper neck portion. More of that same silver, uh, so this is like an A2, I'm a, yeah, so these look like like one and a half type pieces. On the back, more of that uh, inner frame. Got some nice black pieces, these are kind of big as well. Very, very nice big piece for the shield, hopefully that fits in well. And parts for the funnel containers, or the binders, or whatever you want to call them. More of that nice red here, um, yeah. Kind of like parts for your shoulder and whatnot, looking very spiffy, and very, very, very massive parts for the back of the skirt armor and the rest of the uh, the waist. On this side, there's two sides. There's a divider in the middle. Um, we get some yellow. All the different thrusters you see on there, you will not have to paint. Thank you, Bandai. I really appreciate it. That's really, really good. And it seems like all the little tubing for the, uh, whatchamacallit, the energy tube, you're gonna have to do that too. Also, we get some uh, hands right here. These aren't the MP1s, these are the MP2s. So I'm assuming that these are gonna be the standard ones we're gonna be using from now on for kits that, um, for master grade kits, master grade kits that have uh, rounded fingers. We also get a giant sheet of poly caps right behind it. I'm talking massive. Let me move that over a little bit. We'll take this out as well. You get this divider inside here. And over here you get more parts. Uh, looks like there's a lot of duplication going on. That nice uh, darker red... Um, don't. I'm, I'm going to try to find out what kind of color that is. I'm, I'm trying to think for it, but I can't really think of it right now. More parts. Parts of the back of the leg. We get the inner frame portion for the shield. Very, very massive. And also the long rifle. So it seems like there will most likely be a giant seam line on that. And more red. Man. Um, yeah, mainly parts for the shoulders here. Looking very, very good. Parts for the toe, the massive toe. Two of these, they look duplicate. Oh, uh, more thrusters and uh, also those bead parts. We get a nice black portion right here for the beam shot rifle or the shotgun, or whatever you want to call it. And we also get other parts for the rest of the body. Uh, mainly the waist. Giant, massive giant um, inner frame parts. Do you see the size of these things? These things are huge. So, yeah, the scale of this thing just really brings it all to life. It looks like uh, we aren't going to get a rerun of other, other ones. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually the same one we got with the Sinanju. Um, but, you know, I'll take a look at that when we open that up. But yes, nice green, fluorescent green, see-through green, whatever. And more inner frame parts here. Uh, a lot of rounded areas, so kind of reminiscent of the new Gundam Verka. Very rounded, a lot of gray. And the last thing inside is the manual. This thing's actually quite thick and, uh, yeah, might need some time going through this.
All right, starting us off with the A plates. We have our A1 and A2. So we pretty much have a one and a half plate system going on. Uh, mainly parts that are silver. We have pretty much, these are going to be what we're going to be using for our inner frame. They're going to stick out a whole bunch as well. We got parts for the shoulders. Uh, we also got parts for the side skirts, I believe. Uh, parts for the arms. Also, we have parts for the chest right here that are exclusive to the A1. Um, also, this part's going to go on the back of the leg. Um, yeah, you want to be very careful here. Um, it seems pretty easy to break. I don't, you know, be very gentle with this plate. You don't want to break anything. And we also have uh, parts that will contain the funnels in. Um, so looking very, very sharp so far. Uh, not your standard A plates. Either. Moving along to our B plates, we actually get another one and a half in a nice yellow, yellowish orange for the inside of the thrusters and whatnot. And also parts for the energy cable that goes um, in his waist, basically. Um, looking very, very sharp. A uh, lot of mechanical detail on these things as well. It's real. I'm really happy that they actually gave us the innards for every single one of the thrusters. And we also got massive parts like this that are going to stick out through the armor. So looking incredibly good so far, B-plates. Now, strangely enough, our C-plate isn't what you would commonly think a C-plate would be. An actual plate. This is all we get for our C-plate. Um, kind of like this dark gray ish color for the inside of the shield. Looks like there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here and um, if you really want to go in and detail this up you will have the opportunity to. Uh, just be careful that you don't um, do anything to these tips here, they are a little bit fragile looking. Um, just be careful. Be very very careful. Now our D plate's actually this nice black color but since the background is also black it's gonna be a little bit hard to see. Um, we mainly get parts for the beam shot rifle here, so basically like a shotgun, we got his handle here, the barrels, um, a top portion right here, hopefully you guys can see that, so that's going to cover up whatever seam line there will be mainly, and over here we mainly get other parts for, I'm assuming these are for the funnel packs on the back, and also we get this giant crotch-ish area right there, also parts for the rest of the chest that will stick out right around here, um, very hard to pick up, I'm sorry. But oh well. Also a missile that is supposed to go on the shield. Alright, shine, I'm shining the light on this now for our E1 and E2 plates. Hopefully this will, um, you know, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Now, they are, they're pretty much one and a half plates. And we also get the main portion for the shield right there, the black going down there. We also have the parts for the propellant tanks. They look pretty detailed. Um, I'm assuming these are parts for the knee that little accent part, and we also get the parts for the um, the place, the thing that we're going to put the, the funnels in. Also, we have this part right here that's incredibly detailed up. Hopefully you guys can see it. Um, this is supposed to put the, this is where you're going to put the uh, beam tomahawk bit in or whatever. Um, it's going to look very, very nice. It's incredibly detailed. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you that better in a different part though. All right, our F1 and F2 plates look a little like this. Um, of course, there are again one and a half plates you get the F2 as one and a half. Um, there are this, it's this kind of um, lighter, almost pinkish, the salmon-ish kind of color you've seen before, orangey-ish and red. I don't know, it's hard to explain to you. Um, it's kind of an orange-red, we'll go with that, orange-red. And um, you mainly get parts for the shoulders, parts for the foot, the toe, uh, and whatnot. Also, you have parts for the front of the skirts and also parts for the cone near the front, the chest area. Also, you get more n noticeable and important pieces. You get uh, right here, part for the face and also the fin that goes up there. Now, what I have noticed is that this is incredibly, incredibly um, fragile looking and there's a bit of flash on mine. So, I don't know, maybe you won't have flash on yours, but it looks a little bit strange, but oh well, looking good still. In the G plate here, we get this, uh, you know, that standard, I wouldn't say standard, but it's kind of like that Ferrari red. It uh, looks very, very good. We have several parts for the back of the skirt um, right here, the skirt, the back skirt, whatever. We also have parts for the helmet, looking very, very good. I'm very proud of Bandai for putting these, um, the nub mark areas in areas that won't be seen too much, so that's good. It's not on the, on the side of it or anything. Um, or really close to a panel line, so that's good. We also have parts for the, I'm assuming this is for the crotchial area, and um, I found Char. Uh, and the rest of it is mainly parts for the shield, I am very, very assuming so, and also more parts for the legs.
Now here is where it kind of gets a little bit exciting. We have it in that same darker looking red here, and we get parts for um, the shoulders uh, right here, and we also get other area parts as well. We get parts for that front of the leg that's supposed to, or that toe area that's supposed to be able to be, um, it'll be able to extend out and whatever for the transformation. And we also get parts for the knees, the foot, I'm assuming this is for the bottom of the foot, and we also get parts for the funnels. These look like all of the different, um, like the little flaps on the side. I don't really know what to call them at, at this moment. Also, we have the part for the beam saber uh, with that little notch in there, so that's kind of standard. And we also have the funnels. Uh, we have three of them here, and that's because you get two of them, so that makes up your six. Here is our eye plate, and we mainly get parts for the back skirt. The giant back skirt, we get both of them here. We also get parts for the crotchial area, and also the parts for the side of the chest. And that escape pod is also in this dark, almost burgundy color. Um, the sides for where the energy cables are supposed to connect to, and also the mouth for the mega particle beam cannon. Now, to show you guys a contrast, here is that... Um, uh, I said the, we're going to use it as the middle tone, and we also have this one right here. So as you can see, we have three different types of colors for the red on the kit. An orangey one, a more Ferrari, and, uh, you know, standard true kind of red, and also this burgundy-ish kind of red. The J-plate here mainly has parts for the legs and also a little bit for the shield up top. Um, looking incredibly big, and mainly in that color again, that kind of burgundy color. Hopefully the camera can pick it up well enough for you guys. Um, it looks incredibly dark right now, and hopefully it won't offset the colors too much. We have duplicate K runners here. Um, parts for the, um, the detail up parts for the uh, chest area, or the shoulder area, I should say. Um, the cover for the shoulder, the cover for the arm, and we also get other bits that are supposed to go all over the place. Also, the part that's supposed to go for the, the hand, or the arm right here, with the inner frame part or the silver part showing through, so that's going to look very, very nice. Also, uh, parts for the thighs, the bottom of the feet, and also the back of the leg. Uh, we get two of them, of course. L right here, uh, we see first off, we have the part for the, um, the, the lens or whatever for the face. This is going to go in and cover up that mono eye, protect it very, very nicely. Also, we have other areas that you're going to put in for the cameras and scopes for weapons. And, of course, the very important escape pod. Turns out that Bandai did not want to give us another red one to use so that your new Gundam Master Grade can go all Air Jordan on Char. Um, you're, you're going to have to have a clear one, which is actually kind of good, I guess, because you can actually see Char sticking out that way. But... We are going to get two, so one to actually put in, and one to use as a prop. Our M plate right here, um, we're starting to see some of that gray coming through again. Uh, mainly for the inner frame areas, we have uh, a giant piece, two of them actually, for the chest area. We also have other areas for the neck portion. Also the tubing. We also get the tubing down here again um, for the energy tubes that go near the mega particle cannon and also the giant back portion the backpack and whatnot so it looks like we're getting a lot of gray here the end plate is more of the same that same type of gray and we mainly have parts for the lower half of the body um, we have the part that connects all the skirts together also these massive massive parts uh, to connect to the upper body and also the lower body right here um, the detail on this does look okay, I guess, but there is a whole bunch of empty space there as well. Over here, we do get to see the back skirt inner frame looking fairly decent with these, uh, kind of, I don't know, these pod things on the side. And we also have more of them over here that you can put inside there and other areas that you can put in for the inner frame of the back skirt. On the flip side, uh, there's not too much going on here, pretty bare. So I'm assuming these parts over here are going to go inside there. Um, yeah. More gray. Well, we all know that recycling is a very good practice um, when, we're do when we're doing other things to save Mother Earth. Uh, 
but um, we get more recycled parts here, or actually our first little bit with our O-plate. Um, in this nice green color, we, we see right here, if we zoom in quick enough or enough, that these are actually from 2008, which means these are from the Sinanju or Sinanj. Um, you get two of these, they're identical, and they're recycled. Duplicate P plates over here, we mainly get a lot of different areas that you're going to put in um, for the inner frame in that nice gray color. We have uh, ball joint-ish areas or whatever, you're going to put these mainly in the legs I'm assuming, and we also have this rack right here where you can put in the funnels. Right here, this funny looking thing, not sure where this is supposed to go yet, but we'll find that out soon enough. And uh, it looks like these areas are going to go for, I am assuming, the foot, the bottom of the foot. Um, if not, they're going to go on the shoulder. It's either or, really. Uh, shoulder area parts here, and also that little cuffling part you're going to get. The thruster bits right here. Um, and, of course, we get that yellow piece to shove in, so that's going to look very, very nice. And we get two of them. Our Q runners are very, very gray again, and we get duplicate versions of those, so two of those. Um, we have parts for the thruster connection areas, and we also have more inner frame-ish parts that are, that are going to go all over the place. A giant part you're going to put in for the thigh area, for the inner frame for that, and on the bottom we get more parts to detail them up with thrusters, with that yellow part that's going to go inside there. Also, we get some piston action going on there, so that looks very, very nice. And um, this giant minus looking panel. Now our R1 and R2 plates are duplicate plates, or one and a half plates, uh, with the R2 being a little bit less. Uh, we mainly get parts for the funnels up there, uh, connection parts, like inner frame areas that look very familiar to what we're going to put in. Uh, to the the arm socket area, so looks exactly like the new Gundam's one right there. The beam tomahawk thing right there looking kind of cool, and we get more thruster parts. Down here we have the inner frame for, I'm assuming, the front skirt, and uh, if we turn this over, yeah, more parts. These look like they're going to go on together, so front, back skirt, whatever. Uh, we're going to get a lot of that going on. And we also have this part right here. I'm not overly sure where that's going to go. Looking a little funky. We'll find out. Now right here we have our S plate. Now it looks a little bit different. Um, the light's going to reflect off it a little bit. But the color on this is actually um, kind of a purplish gray. Not quite the same gray we've been seeing uh, you know, throughout the rest of the review. So it's going to be a little bit hard to pick up. But we mainly get parts for the long rifle. And uh, it looks really, really good. It seems like we are going to get a part that is going to go either on the top or the bottom to hopefully cover up some of those seam lines. If not, we're going to have a giant gashing seam line all the way down, and uh, you're going to have to repair it. Oh well. Now finally, we have these manipulators. Now this is the only part on the kit that's actually ABS plastic, um, and they are the ones that are very, very similar to the Master Grade uh, New Verka. Now, these ones you just snap into place, they're all pre-done for you, you just have them wiggle them a little bit, and they move amazingly. They're almost like perfect grade versions. Um, if we look up close here though, these are not the MP1s, these are the MP2s, uh, that's because these fingers are slightly rounded, mainly for your evil guy, your Xeon kits, uh, whereas the other ones are completely more square, more angular, more good guy, and those are the MP1s. Down here we have the decal sheet, the water slide decal sheet, so I'm incredibly proud. A whole bunch of different markings and whatnot. Um, good luck to anyone who's actually attempting to put all these on. We also have parts uh, for like the mono eye and whatnot, so you're actually not going to get anything to really put on there. And also here we have uh, more parts to make it even more real grade esque, and we have uh, some parts that are kind of in this matte, this matte kind of sticker. You just stick these on and really separate the color even more. Although it is already pretty awesome. Alright everyone, that concludes part one of the review. Uh, the unboxing for the Master Grade Zazabi Verka. And I hope you guys liked it. Now be sure to come back in the next part when we see how uh, these runners actually fare. And we'll actually get to see how the different limbs actually work out and whatnot. Hopefully they look good and they actually, you know, they meet those expectations. My name is Dr. Tony Tony Chopper and I'll see you then. Peace out guys.